Um, I've been trying to figure out whether I should do this or do this, and um, as usual, it's sort of halfway in between. So I'll just try to get through this stuff and uh, be able to read the talk properly. Um, I want to begin with a quote from uh, Thucydides, um, who is a historian of uh, circa 410 uh, BCE, wrote the history of the Peloponnesian War. And in that he said, quote, most people will not take the trouble to find out the truth, but accept the first story they hear. Um, the Greek historian sounds like a prophet to me. Today, the radio talk show host's story becomes the only truth, it seems, particularly in this election. Um, I wonder if any of you have watched the TV series Lost. Anybody here saw that? Um, uh, <coughs> Well, those of you who watch the TV series Lost may have felt lost when following the strange scenarios of script, uh, including the mysterious group of uncontrolled, powerful, but true believers called, as Loring knows, quote, the others. Uh, as I provide some historical background <coughs> and personal subjective views for our topic of religion elections, I find this 2010 campaign is saturated with, quote, political others, end of quote, and their startling views on government, sometimes motivated by their religious beliefs and intentions. For some, religion begins with Jesus, Pilate, and the high priest of Jerusalem. Today in Congress, for example, Jews and Christian Zionist lobbies dispense millions of dollars to politicians, such as Senator Joe Lieberman, whom I heard said he is uh, Israel's guardian in the U.S. Congress, guaranteeing American allegiance to God's chosen people in their promised land. It sounds like almost like an agent uh, in the Congress. But uh, this country has been through this before. A theocratic politics was also imposed upon American colonial structures from abroad by an English king who was head of the Church of England and controlled a mercantile military economy. Puritans left England to find their own religious land, Quakers to William Penn's holy experiment, independents to James Madison's American experiment. By 1776, Jefferson said it best, and you've heard this, all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with inalienable rights of life, liberty, and happiness. Governments are instituted to secure these human rights and receive their powers not from warrior gods or kings, but from the consent of the governed. A new political group after the Revolutionary War describing themselves as, of all things, liberals, uh, and founded upon Cicero's natural law, Locke's social contract, <laughs> the separation of powers and Madison's radical federalism, displaced the first ineffective, limited Confederate government. Jefferson urged a wall between church and state to benefit both. And Madison wrote the Bill of Rights to include it, which is apparently unknown to at least one candidate running in this year's election that you may have heard of. Public education to empower all the people, not just the rich, was Jefferson's idea to guarantee literate and educated voters so that emotion and anger and ignorance were set aside for reason then. Great issues and conflicts have arisen since involving the electoral process and religion. Slavery, segregation, and discrimination found justification for some in the Bible. Prejudice against Jews, Catholics, women, blacks, Asians, and Arabs was and is often religiously motivated. An explicit religious argument arose from majority rightist Christians that this is a Christian nation and that all non-Christians need to recognize this. But minority left Christian groups reminded us that Jesus taught that we should not swear at all, but let our yes, yes, and no, no replace the need for oaths. For this reason, Jehovah's Witnesses and Quakers refused to recite the oath of allegiance and salute the flag. In West Virginia State Board of Education versus Barnett in 1943, the Supreme Court declared that the state could not compel the observance of such rituals in violation of the First Amendment. 
Jesus also said, do not risk the evildoer with war and other violent acts, but preach the overcoming of evil with good and love for one's enemies. You can't love and kill your enemies at the same time, said conscientious objectors to war. Dorothy Day's Catholic workers risked civil disobedience for conscience sake. But before all that, the Know Nothing Party hated Catholics, cross-burning Klan hated Negroes and Jews. By 1968, issues such as abortion and organized public school prayer were directly grounded in religious belief. Yet while I was a Virginia legislator in Richmond, Jerry Falwell lived only 100 year, miles from the legislature and never showed up in 1968 against proposed liberal abortion laws, as you would think he would if this was a lifelong passion of his. Just two Catholic priests did that that year, but that all changed, as you know. Ronald Reagan invited Protestant conservative activists to be part of his campaign, endorsing the moral majority of the Christian coalition of Pat Robertson and slogans of far-right Christians such as God, guns, and country. Oral Roberts became verbal Roberts. Religiously motivated militias arose and issues of school vouchers for religious private schools, religious artifacts in public schools, and ten amendment plaques in public places were debated. In this year's election, the governor of Texas, described as a, quote, business first Christian rightist by his own campaign, campaigns to reduce government and taxes and, quote, stand tall against the nation's enemies, end of quote, which costs, of course, trillions of dollars while ignoring social services for the needy and protecting protection for the victims of prejudice. In 1967, as a state legislator, I drafted a bill to end Virginia's anti-miscegenation laws, which prohibited blacks and Native Americans from intermarriage with whites. The Supreme Court thereafter ruled in Loving versus Virginia, an ACLU case, that such racist practices were unconstitutional. But I experienced religious overtones of prejudice against African Americans in Virginia then, nevertheless. There were stories going around based on the Bible. One of them was that Noah's son Ham, a grievous sinner because he happened to see his father naked, was chased out to Africa and became a lonely Negro. So there were these innuendos of racism and religion and in elections, uh, in the elections that I campaigned in were elected uh, to the legislature that went on at that time. In this election, one candidate wants to end civil rights laws. Another wants to abolish the right of the people to elect you as senators. A conservative black candidate calls for violent revolution if the Democrats win. It's very strange to me what's going on. By the 1990s, Colorado was a focus and homosexuality the issue. Under the slogan of no special rights, 53% of Coloradans uh, voted to take away what amounted to the ordinary political rights of American citizens who happened to be gay. In Romer versus Evans, the Supreme Court ruled that was unconstitutional. Marriage and sex between the same gender has haunted both the election booth and the military barracks since then. Religious forces tried to codify particular Christian views through legislation, claim that the Old Testament says no to homosexuality. But check out Genesis 19.8 where Lot offers his daughters to male strangers rather than male guests whom they requested to, quote, do with them as you please, 